with the old and in with the new, for lack of a better phrase. We need to talk about Peter Doe at Helmet Lang. So he debuted already at New York Fashion Week. I really enjoyed the collection. Um, I thought it was a really good debut. It maybe didn't blow me away, but I thought it set a good primer for what's to come. It was a good way to kind of, quote unquote, cleanse the palette and sort of allow him the space and the platform to tell his story via the platform of Helmet Lang. Some people on Fashion Twitter don't agree. So I'm going to go through the timeline of events, talk, read a little bit of the article that kind of, you know, um, spoke about his introduction to Helmut Lang and his story so far that was featured in the New York Times and then of course go through the collection and have some of my opinions you know included here and there so this is courtesy of New York Times the article title is a fashion prodigy um, makes a big debut no pressure Peter Doe held up a pair of Helmut Lang jeans by their pockets pulling the pulling them against their waist against his waist sorry the denim was cut off it was off white splattered with a white paint and softened with age he had already reached out and filled the fabric pinching it between his fingers between my fingers sorry when mr doe said that he'd never washed them maybe that's the kind of gross of some people i'm just scared of destroying them 10 years ago he'd been bought um he'd bought them at a vintage store for about eight three hundred dollars he said and now he was shoving them off um in the home head he was showing them off in the home land headquarters in the meatpacking district of manhattan Mr. Doe arrived at the company in May, fresh faced at 32 and ready to revive the brand as its creative director. Oof, imagine being the creative director of Helmet Lang at 30 fucking two. Fucking crazy, man. Um, he's definitely a prodigy. Um, it continues. Mr. Doe felt attached to the jeans in a way that people often do. Denim that simply fits very well. He wore them while interviewing for the job. And after he got it, he decided to recreate the long slim cut in his new collection. That's something everyone always does isn't it i remember when i would uh you know when you go to your adidas interview vans interview yeah i worked for quite a lot of footwear brands isn't it i worked for vans this is all retail vans adidas nike and that's it right vans adidas nike yeah but those are the main ones really and obviously dr martin's but i wouldn't call that would you call that a footwear brand or a shoe brand doesn't matter but anyway when you go there you usually would go and tr you know in an effort to get the job you think you have to wear the shoes you don't really it doesn't really matter to be fair obviously you don't go in there with competitors but it doesn't actually matter but people do as a good omen sort of thing um it continues says this essentially um this essentially this is essentially Mr. Doe's objective. He wants to reintroduce Helmet Lang, once considered among the coolest, um, cleverest, and most modern labels in fashion, and not just for the sake of doing it. Um, he said that even when he was, I'm not, I'm not at the brand anymore. I hope I built something strong enough foundation that it goes on, which is a very mature and a clever way to approach this because he knows how fickle the industry is, right? He could be up right now. He could be the man. And then suddenly things could go completely south and it's absolutely over. So he's trying to create a legacy right now, real quick. He adopts the mindset I like with football managers where they don't talk about having time. You earn time based on good collections. I don't believe you should just be given an unlimited time to just do and tell you entire story no you need to hit out of the park you need to be commercially viable you need to like you know appeal to the fucking heads you need to appeal to the people on social media the shoppers you got to hit it across the park across you know every single segment or every single sector you have to at least hit a seven it's super hard but that's why these guys get paid the big bucks you know what i mean to be creative directors because it's incredibly difficult to do all of those sort of things to balance um you know um art and commerce at the highest levels possible it continues mr mr lange self-taught designer from austria Duh, 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 was um early to the se selling of luxury jeans and being and beginning in paris in the mid 1980s he became known for his clothes that were utilitarian and witty he popularized slender androgynous suits he used sheer lay lay layerings and cutouts to suggest sex in a kind of unsexy way and the anti sorry the anti vava voom so it's an anti vax <laughs> the anti vava voom um like a nipple popping out of a men's tank top um in that it can be hard to feel interesting 
it can be hard to feel interesting while getting uh, dressed to push the envelope of style without feeling like you're wearing a costume or sacrificing tailoring fit. But Mr. Lang made it easier, at least for those who could afford his clothes. Dresses and jackets started from $700 or from $1,740 right now. Yet after Mr. Lang left the company in 2005 and despite efforts by the new owners and several new designers, the brands never recaptured the Y2K era relevance. Mr. Doe is now feeling the pressure to deliver. He will introduce his first Hermit Lang collection on Friday and it's the most anticipated show in New York. I'm running on adrenaline, said Mr. Doe. Um, six days before the runway show, sitting on a bench on the waterfront outside of his apartment in Williamsburg, neighborhood of Brooklyn, it was a perfect morning. The sun inched over the high-rise condos, casting a shadow across half of Mr. Doe's face. I wonder, does he, t when he's doing interviews with, with press, does he take off his face mask or he just leave it on the whole time? I wonder. Um, it was an apt image. As a designer, he had been split in half this year, dividing attention between Helmut Lang and his namesake label, which plans to have a runway show in Paris and release a Banana Republic collaboration this month. Fuck you know, he's got a lot on his plate, in it? This is what happens when celebrated emergent designers are successful. Self bifurcation. Um, they build up their own labels, sometimes from scraps. They get recruited to run bigger brands with in house ateliers and merchandising teams and, cor and corporate overlords. They delegate more than more but sleep less earlier this summer mr doe began carrying two cell phones one for each job mama i feel like i'm crashing at some point he said still he smiled oh this doesn't sound good in it? it sounds like he's already feeling the pressure so maybe that's what we saw on the runway we saw a very tentative and nervous collection i liked it personally but it didn't really go out there to say a lot even though there was a poem and it was really good kind of feel behind it a lot of emotion you saw him crying at the end of the runway it did kind of feel a little bit tentative and maybe that's the reason why he was feeling a lot of the pressure and he just went maybe a bit more safer than probably he should have who knows we continue on the note of mr doe's smile he doesn't typically show it in public he wears a face mask when being photographed or attending industry events not while working in a studio however or while walking his dog uni a shibu inu or around his neighborhood with his longtime roommate lydia suka the operations director peter doe and his boyfriend matthew jamison matthew jamison jamison right the design director at le labo fragrances oh, okay that's cute um so their house smells nice and they've got a brilliant wardrobe good to see mr doe only hides in public it's less extreme emulation of his heroes martin margella and an avant-garde designer who declined photographs entirely along with interviews and post-show runway bows still when people know when people now ask mr doe why he wears a mask he has somewhat lost the plot he says there isn't one single answer that I can give, he said. I just wanted people to talk about the work and dissect the work. I don't really understand why it's such an important thing. Maybe it's backfired. Yeah, he knows why it's important. To be fair, the mask kind of added to his mystique. It added to the allure of what he was making. The fact that he didn't want to show his face, even though he was making these brilliant, um, really fresh clothes, amazing tailoring. Uh, you know, he kind of had his finger on the pulse. He had his whole crew of like super cool girls that were all around the world, especially parts in Europe. They're absolutely obsessed over the stuff that he wore and they kind of you know, helped to kind of propel the brand. But obviously his look and how he approached fashion definitely did lend to it. So I'm sure he knows, but... It must get annoying having to answer the question all the time um, why you don't. I think it's a good thing if you can to have some level of anonymity. You're able to just design, you're, especially if you don't care about the clout of like, because there's some people that do, right? Someone that like for sure, like a Matthew Williams, right? Um, or like a Virgil Abloh RIP. Those guys cared about their image. They cared about walking into a room and everybody knowing, oh my God, that's that Louis Vuitton guy. That's a Givenchy dude. That's a, a leak. So I mean, that's that. Like they want to be known. Heron Preston's a good idea as well. Another one. Those guys want to be seen. Even Charles Jeffrey, my guy, he wants to be seen. That's fine. But there's some designers who just all about the work. And if their work is selling and they don't need to be seen, why be seen? I get it. We continue here. Maybe not. There's ample discussions of Mr. Doe's work among his online fan base, including on TikTok, which seems like an evolution of Mr. Doe's earlier adoption of Tumblr. It continues, Mr. Doe's known for dramatic, elegant silhouettes, billowing shirt dresses and oversized blazers, and coats of exposed backs, often in neutral or muted colours, as it designed under the assumption that a bold shape can outshout a bold colour on any day. Despite the enthusiasm for the brand among young fashion people, there are not clothes for cool people. Uh, Peter Doe offers a grown-up intellectual glamour made to last forever 
they're priced that way too. Dresses and jackets exceed $3,000 and jeans run more than $800. I still see a lot of cool people wearing it, to be fair. Maybe he doesn't intend it to be for the cool kids, um, but they do definitely wear it. Um, he came onto the scene like a lightning rod, said designer Philip Lim, who founded his brand in New York almost 20 years ago. He was born with tailoring chalk in his hands. Definitely agree with that one. Um, Mr. Doe, um, confessional, more, more confessional millennial than Ironic Zuma, once compared designing a collection to making foe with his father a former army chief who brought his family to philadelphia from vietnam when mr doe was 14 i think they pronounced it vietnam right vietnam um it took it took hard work and lots of practice says mr doe and um, wrote in a letter to attendees for a spring 2020 runway show there were hours of simmering waiting to reduce all of that perfect and clear broth mr doe cooking uh, hopefully he doesn't hopefully he doesn't have like a show because that would be a little bit like you know, imagine he has a show where he has like a a street food market in the middle of his runway or something. He turns it into like, uh, like, do you know what I mean? That would be very, very, very corny. I hope that doesn't happen. I hope he's just talking about his inspiration of his family and cooking just as a, you know, as an anecdote. And he doesn't actually go all Karl Lagerfeld on it and just transform his runway into... <laughs> into a strip somewhere in vietnam but anyway while mr doe was considering taking a job at helmet lang he'd also been weighing up the opportunity with another luxury brand Ooh, i wonder who that luxury brand was though he wouldn't reveal the name of the house he sought advice over dinners with mr lim and ruba abu sorry ruba abu nima a creative director formerly of tiffany and company Okay, was this the person that got replaced by um, Alexander, whatever his name is? Oh, no. His dad kind of came in and said, hey, this is my son's job. Hilarious, actually, because I just saw recently that Tiffany re re collaborated with Ramoa. And if I'm not mistaken, that son, Alexander, is also the CEO of Ro Ramoa, right? So it's like he's collaborating with himself. <laughs> <laughs> alexander for alexander okay cool um anyways we could digress i wonder who the other luxury house was hmm this poor poor brand mr lang said had just been beaten and beaten to oblivion said mr uh mrs abu nima who still sometimes wears a white suede vintage helmet lang hoodie a blight on days when it's close to zero percent risk of getting it dirty he will be able i'm pretty sure to take things out of the archive and recontextualize them for 2023 and 2024 i think the actually a very difficult thing to do clearly no one else man should do it yep classic cars one of the largest private collections of helmet lang's work is owned by new york city stylist named david casavant who began acquiring the pieces up with a 500 of them and when he was a teenager okay that's a guy on instagram um dua lipa has worn some of those nipple revealing tanks from casavant's archive rihanna wore ripped jeans solange wore a harness but generally the most requested pieces are mr lang's high quality basics as basic gets a sheer tank top or t-shirt or crop top said mr casavant um uh, who was surprised to find this also the case of the sale he organized with Dover Street Market last year the jeans sold like crazy I think people keep coming back for that because it can be weirdly hard to find something so simple now but done the right way Mr. Do recognizes that part of the job of Mohamed Lang and is to continue offering the high quality wardrobe staples which probably answers why Kathy Horn thought he looked like Uniqlo this is his intention he wanted to have staples in there beyond the show beyond the fantasy that you're going to sell at the end of the day these are beautiful functional products that people even outside of fashion like my mum can enjoy the prices will start at 95 dollars for a t-shirt which is very good for a designer brand to be honest and tank tops um climbing to what's it did tank tops climbing to the climate to three thousand dollars um for a speciality outwear items the sizes will range from three x from three xs to three xl i actually enjoyed it i watched the live stream on my phone and i actually thought it was very very good in terms of a debut but a lot of people on fashion twitter weren't really fans of it maybe because it was too you know self-referential digging deep too much into the archives and stuff but like i said for a first um iteration to kind of cleanse the palette and to get people prepared head for his era of helmet lang i really liked it some of the tailoring really was great this guy um from what's his face from the idol one of the actors on it he modeled in the show a few other well-known models who i'm not really too familiar with when it comes to names you know i'm usually about the clothes and the designers i'm not really too infatuated with models and stuff but the looks were amazing i thought they were styled pretty well i thought the show itself was really interesting because it had the models 
walking sort of like as if they were walking in a busy city center like somewhere like new york and they were kind of crossing each other which was kind of hard for them to read i think a lot of them kind of you know forgot where they were meant to go but i thought it did really worked really well especially with the poem um being read um you know um from the sound and stuff of the music playing and then there was bits of the poem that was printed on the runway itself there was like a picture there was like a camera that was from the top down looking down so it kind of looked like it was a commuter you know camera kind of checking residents as they're walking across and shit i really did like it loads of the good little color block tops and t-shirts were really nice again great tailoring great jackets knits shirts trousers all of it was really nice nice color palette i think some of these looks a lot of people were kind of saying maybe reference raf simmons calvin klein i think before i think that some people were kind of mentioning which maybe was the case but in general i thought this look and the yellow um belt around the suit kind of reminded me a little bit of the uh, iconic iconic virgil abler designed um safety harness belt thing from off-white back in the day that everyone used to wear that i still have my wardrobe somewhere uh, that did kind of remind me of that sort of era but again all of it was really beautiful i really enjoyed most of it and i think the really standout thing for me something i was like okay this guy kind of gets it was the shoes the detailing of the shoes these kind of reminded me oddly enough these little these hot no little these high heel shoes that might be what do you say the heel is four inches maybe five maybe six um um high heel boot with this nice cylindrical almost design of a heel at the back all black with a nice cylindrical high heel and it sort of reminded me of like an updated version of the iconic um peter doe boot that he did with the metal toe which i'm still annoyed that didn't come in men's from what i remember there was this iconic boot that all the girlies were wearing for a period of time i remember when i was going to berlin i just saw them everywhere like i remember just i think they even just relaunched at that time i went to berlin and i was just walking around kreuzberg and shit i'm just seeing all the girlies fucking wearing these amazing boots and a few guys obviously you could squeeze into size nines because i think that's the highest size they went up to but i thought they were really well done these amazing chelsea boots with this really thick soft and this amazing little um you know uh, metal plate at the front if anything they kind of reminded me of a sophisticated um luxe version of the classic dr martin with the metal toe cap or also a way more stripped and almost um minimal version of the new rock boot that i know and love i think he did them expertly but i just wish they could kind of come in men's but i guess this will definitely be unisex um you know when you kind of harken back to helmet lang and what he was kind of known for in terms of having loads of those kind of covered shows so this is going to be really cool to see and i think these are going to be a real um you know a real kind of seller when these original when these eventually do hit the stores i think people are going to go goo goo gaga over those boots so again you see some of the tailoring here you see some of the ribbons on the flipping pants and stuff and all this stuff i'm pretty sure was um stuff that they referenced from older helmet lang collections you see some classic derby shoes um again great detailing with the styling with the buttons there some really beautiful stuff i i really thought was really really nice and again a nice straight back motion and even just looking at the makeup the fact that it was you know the hair slicked back you know not much razzmatazz going on in the face i think it was very intentional to have it looking a certain way i love the stack on the bottom of the jeans here and how they kind of fall over the boots it kind of reminds me of um it actually does kind of remind me of carl lagerfeld this entire stack and how they go over the flipping boots here they look really really well they look really really awesome again you've got a side view of those boots which i think are going to be absolutely you know one of the biggest sellers they're going to fly like hotcakes people are going to be all over those boots when they eventually do drop and yeah i did enjoy it i thought the show was absolutely amazing you have here just the the shirt with the um, i forgot the i forgot who the poet was who they were reading from but the phrase here says this is how i carry us for in your skin i've placed my trust so yeah great details great boots loads of great pieces of tailing loads of great pieces of layering um and again i thought a really good debut from peter doe over there at helmet lang weren't too happy one of them being kathy horn and she has some very choice words to say about peter doe which i'm gonna quickly get on here to talk about to you so um it goes as follows this is kathy horn's review of uh, peter doe for helmet lang his debut collection it says here two years ago on the greenpoint waterfront peter doe staged his first runway show and the reassurance came striding through every look he was a minimalist in a traditional jill sander and phoebe fowler for whom he worked for at celine but he put his own stamp on the form with flowing white silk shirts printed with exploded flower and an airy suits in a in a 
palest pink and taupe that caught a modern vibe. A native of Vietnam who arrived in the United States at 14 and got around, got turned onto fashion by a project runway, Doe could make his references slide between two cultures like a, sl sl like a side split tuni tunic in a pale pink worn over a lighter shade pink trousers and finish off with a laser fitting coat. He wasn't heavy handed and that in itself suggested a substantial design in the making. New York needed that more than ever. So when fast retailing, a parent company of Uniqlo announced that there will be the new designer Helmer Lang, another of his brands, it made sense. That didn't quite happen on Friday, and the New York Spring collections got underway in the sweltering heat. Dot certainly navigated Lang's um, straightest line tailoring and opening with suits with a fuchsia stripe down the size of the pants and a nod to the well-known Lang collection. The Austrian designer retired from fashion in 2005 after selling his brand, and Doe evoked Lang's taste for the ordinary garments like a t-shirt. But everything in context, when Lang appeared on the Paris Fashion Week scene, sorry, on the Paris scene in 1980s almost everything that was extremely glamorous or in the case of Thierry Mugler and um, Jean-Paul Gaultier um, an extremely camp version of Glitz. Gianni Versace was doing his own version um, of sexy glamour in Milan and Lang was a blunt counter to all of that and putting an ordinary undershirt or utilitarian trench coat on the runway and calling it fashion was startling at the time it was new plus the amazing thing about lang was that his clothing made you feel differently when you wore it it was in the specific cut of his suit jackets and coats i remember a stylist telling me in the mid 90s that they sort of grabbed you lang's clothes delivered a different sexual charge and you couldn't quite put your finger on why um, we're obviously to a point now where a t-shirt or a simple cotton shirt tucked into a pair of jeans means nothing. On those runway, there were merely reiterations of Lang's um, significance, sorry, signifiers, devoid of meaning. The same was largely true of his tailoring. My thought while watching the show was, <laughs> these clothes are cool and they, these clothes are not cool, sorry, and they could be. Doe obviously um, has a daunting task ahead of him and if he wants to make a real project of Helmet Lang and have some fun in the process, he has to first get to the bottom of the Lang's um, sensibility, what made him so different and then find a relatable beat in the present moment. Heidi Semain did the smart thing when he took over at Saint Laurent after Tom Ford. Though his approach was initially annoying and seemingly lazy, yes, because Kathy Horn was one of the people to criticise Heidi Semain a lot during those times, so much so that I think she's still banned she might still be banned from covering anything that he does actually because she was very scathing of his earlier reviews um early collections which kind of you know she, she she's not on the right side of history because those early Saint Laurent collections essentially birthed a whole segment of fashion and menswear especially when I think of brands like Fear of God um, Mike and Mary um, and a few others right they all got birthed from Hedy Semaine's era at fucking Saint Laurent do your fucking googles um it continues here um, Semaine located the moment in Saint Laurent's career when the designer was truly subversive, roughly between 1965 and 1970. When he did the original tuxedo, the baby doll dresses and the pop art dresses and the see-through black blouse. And for me, that's where Semaine found his modern link and then he took those styles further. Doe is going to have to try to find his own point of contact and with Lang and then express that spirit through the contemporary way without respect to his legacy otherwise we might as well go to Uniqlo which is fucking brutal so I guess what she's trying to say is that maybe he's referencing too much he's trying to take on too much he's trying to reference too much of the Helmet Lang legacy or archives he should pick a particular time period lays it in on it and reinterpret it or re-showcase it the way he wants to in his own vision fair enough I guess you have to wait and see the only thing that I don't like about this stuff and I think I've seen a few people online saying you know bad things about the Helmet Lang collection is that in my opinion I've always felt like to some extent Peter Doe was kind of overrated I liked what he did overall, but I thought the way that some of the girlies and the gays and the people just in general who like fashion on fashion Twitter and fashion social media, the way they talk about Peter Doe, you think it'd be a little more interesting than what it actually is. I think it was cool. I think it caught a moment. I think it obviously he's able to, you know, he was able to 
capture a vibe and put that into his clothing and shit and his approach and how he just communicates and the way he carries himself and his experience all those things kind of played into it but when you actually look at the collections they've always been in my opinion a tad underwhelming so i was always annoyed that people didn't call it out because i guess they wanted to be a part of that core cool group that you know knows him and hangs around in that group or loves what he does and stuff and they were never really honest about his collection so that's why when it comes to the helmet lang stuff it's a lot more easier to say because it's not really him right he's like him designing for another brand so it's, it's there's like um there's more degrees of separation people to like feel comfortable enough to say stuff which i don't really rate because i look back to some of these previous collections and in my personal opinion i thought it was starting to get hit and miss maybe around because i think if i'm not mistaken the if i'm not mistaken the boot itself might have come around 2020 the boot i'm talking about with the metal toe so i think ever since 2021 or maybe 20 yeah every 2021 onwards it's been hit and miss hit and miss hit and miss collection wise it's not really been that great and it's been quite repetitive and if anything i felt like when you got appointed that helmet lang it would actually be a good thing which is weird to say this right i thought you'd actually refresh his namesake label as a somewhat um you know what's that thing called bedroom creative myself i always feel like whenever i've got more projects on and i'm trying to balance more plates usually it brings out the best in me because i'm able to split my mind or you know across different projects across different platforms across different planes at the same time while doing work and thinking of other things at the same time also it just i don't know by default that's what i like i guess some people some some other people like to do one thing at a time but i think there are some of those designers that do exist that they do benefit from operating at the highest level on different projects at the same time obviously a obvious example would be virgil Abloh rip so i thought if peter Doe got, gets the home and lang job um he would actually even though they're you know even though their um, aesthetic is somewhat similar there's a lot there's a lot of differences between what they do and the customers they may be appealed to that there could be an opportunity for him to sort of split his brain but also be able to kind of inspire himself so that when he then goes to when he then goes back to design under his namesake label he's got a sense of freedom and appreciation for what he does because he's not you know he's not sort of like having to answer to his corporate overlords that it would give him a a, an extra kick up the ass it would kind of give him a new lease of life a new bit of energy to kind of attack his namesake label the way he attacked it when he first came into the scene because it felt like for me he started to run out with ideas personally when it came to his new collections i thought maybe one of the standout ones in recent years had to have been spring 2023 but i thought the rest of them were very very hit and miss for the most part so um like i said i thought the debut was really good i really did enjoy it i think a lot of it's going to be um it's going to sell pretty well i think it all looks very wearable um i'm eager to see what those boots with the silver heel end up looking like in real life and what the price is going to be um and hopefully they are going to be made in men's i'm hoping they are and you know they're able to kind of get them in some way shape or form so big up peter doe anyway a um, great debut and i can't wait to see more from the guy when that eventually happens i cannot wait to see more I cannot, cannot wait to see more.